Hi, this video is going to show you how we generate uh, skyography, uh, which is shadows, on this elevation of the Barcelona Pavilion. Uh, so what I've got over here is a section through the building on this line. It's looking generally in this direction, but it's also picking up the shape of the bench as well. So it's kind of looking backwards and forwards. Okay, so it's a pretty rough section, but it just picks up the key features of the building. Okay, the different marble walls, the bench, the cruciform column, which is the white lines, the glazing system, we've got the frames and the glass, and then the front face of the marble, which is nearest to us in this elevation. Okay, so I just kind of corresponded those on plan and section so you can understand which items uh, relate to which. Okay, so what we what we kick off with is uh, setting up a line that's the angle of the sun. So I'm just going to come along to here and just draw a line downwards. Uh, I'm just going to flip back to drafting an annotation. Okay, so my command prompt, give myself a bit of space. Okay, so I just need a line, orthos on, uh, as far as object snaps go, end point intersection and perpendicular will do the job. So we'll pull the line down from this point and make it reasonably long. Then rotate this back the way by 45 degrees. So rotate, pick the object, return, base point is the end of top end of the line and the angle minus 45. Okay, I'm going to clear these away because they're kind of in the way of where we're working. Okay, so this is the sun coming down at 45 degrees and it clips the edge of the roof here and so it puts this area of the wall into shadow and this area of this wall is in the sunlight. So we just project a line from where our beam of light hits the wall. So we want a line from intersection, we drag that across Take it to this yellow line because this is the end of this wall. Okay, so that sets this area in shadow, this area in sunlight. Okay, I'm just going to switch this grey layer off because I don't want to confuse people. Okay, so as the roof is projecting outwards, so we can see on plan this is the roof shape, it's projecting forwards of the wall. This side of the roof is also is generating a shape onto that wall as well. Okay, now you can position this in two ways. We could copy this line from here to here. You could also get that from the plan. Okay, so if we took a 45 degree line from there, where it hits the wall gives us the distance. So if we do the same again, draw a line, rotate it by 45, wrong way, should have been minus 45, so I'll go minus 90 instead, and if I take a line up from that collision, you can see all these lines are meeting at the same place, so either way you do it, you get the same result. So I'll take that one away, and then just join these two together. So I use the fillet command for that. Okay, so this area is in shadow, this area is in sunlight. We then move on to the next object. Okay, if it's coming forwards towards us, then the shadow would get higher. Okay, so it'd be a narrower shadow. If this object, these objects were further away from us, the shadow would get longer so the line would be further down. Okay. In our example, the glazing is further back than this wall, so we would expect the shadow line to end up further down. Let's see how that works. Okay, so we follow the line down until it hits the frame of the window. Take a line from there. It carries on though and hits the glass. So we take a line from the collision with the glass. You can stretch those now. 
grab the ends of the lines with a crossing window, return, base point can be anywhere, and I can drag those across to the elevation. I'm just going to let them run through. Okay, so the upper line here is where the shadow hits the framework, the lower line is where the shadow hits the glass. So it should be a case of trimming now. I'll try and keep all the lines on screen at the same time. So we'll trim the ends first. Let's just get rid of the ends. Let's just take all of these away. Now just select the red lines as your cutters. Enter. Okay. So we want to retain this bit, but lose this bit. Lose this bit, retain this bit. So it's kind of up and down. Lose, lose. Lose, lose. Okay, just keep going along. And lose. Okay, this line eventually is going to be deleted. We'll show you why in a second. Okay, if the sun was coming straight from the front down at 45 degrees, that would be the pattern. But it's not, it's coming from the side at 45 degrees. So the edges of each of the window frames, these are going to cast a shadow as well. The edge of this wall is going to cast a shadow. The yellow line is going to cast a shadow. We need to look at the plan now. Okay, this 45 degree line can be used. Copy that. From the end point to here. Let's just do this bit first. Okay, so this means that all this area is in shadow. I'm going to draw a polyline with a little bit of width on it so you can see what I mean. So all of that is in shadow. Okay, so we hit the frame at this point and we hit the glass at this point. Okay, you stretch again, drag those lines up to the elevation. It's a bit far away, isn't it? I should maybe put it a bit closer. I actually think I will bring it a bit closer. Just to make things a little bit easier, let's pull it a bit closer. Okay, then stretch those up. Okay, pull them right up through. Okay, so the, the, the right hand line is where the shadow stops on the frame, so we can trim away from there, use these two lines as the cutters, return, take away, take away. This is the shadow line on the glass, so we chop away using the frame. Okay, so the shadow is getting a little bit longer, okay, and then it unites with the shadow that's coming from the horizontal. So we fill it those two together and that leaves this line giving us no information. So that line can be deleted. Okay, so the shadow is over the frame here all the way down. It's a little bit different here because we don't have the wall next to us. So let's check that situation. Copy the diagonal line, return end point to end point and we want a single line just drag that up from that intersection perpendicular fillet the two and trim off the bottom okay now we can copy that line return Using this as the base point, using the end point here, we can copy it into each window opening. And finally, tidy that up with a fillet on those last two. Great, we're making progress. We've got shadow that's quite a complex shape now. We then get the next object that's going away from us is the cruciform column. 
So let's have a look at that in section. Okay, the beam of light comes down, hits the front of the column, the thin front, then hits the side of this portion, but we don't have to worry about anything behind because it's not going to be visible in the elevation. So just two lines projecting from there. Okay, stretch those, take those across till they cut, cut, cut across the column. Okay, trim up as if the light was coming from the front. Okay, so it, it hits. Oops. Cut the cutters first with two verticals and take away these two bits. So that's where the light hits. We've got this bit in light and this bit in dark. Do the same beyond. So trim away. Okay. But this bit is not going to be needed because the front portion of the column, the bit that's poking towards us, should cast that into shadow. Let's check that on the plan. Copy the diagonal from the end of the line, take it to the column, take these away just now, and you can see because it's 45 degrees and these distances are the same, this area is in shadow back on the elevation means that this line isn't needed. So the only part of the column that's in the daylight is this strange shape here. That's the only bit that's receiving the sunshine. The sun then hits the wall behind. Or does it? Very coincidentally the distance of the overhang here is exactly the same as the height of the wall. So the green line is going right to the base of the wall. So none of that marble wall, none of wall C receives any sunshine. That makes it easy. So our shadow is all in this area. Okay, the roof you know, returns sideways, okay, it goes along this way, so it's going to be casting a shadow over this area. Now, if there were no walls underneath, then the roof would cast a shadow onto the ground in that kind of fashion. So the shadow would be extending out like that. But how far does it go? Let's see. We can copy this 45 degree line from end point here to the very tip of the roof. Okay, so the sun comes along and the first beam of light is this one. Okay, extend that to the ground. So you've got the extend command, EX, return, pick your barrier, return, extend the line. This is fresh air here, so there's no shadow in that area, but all of this would be in shadow. So trim away. And that completes the shadow from the roof in this area. We've then got a shadow from this roof though. This is further back. Okay, so this roof portion is going to cast a shadow onto part of this wall. Not much of it. Okay, we can use the diagonal line, make sure we get an end point there, that's fine, okay, but the height is different because the overhang here is a different depth to the overhang here. So let's take the, the distance from the plan instead. So we'll copy a 45 degree to the corner of the roof and then project up from where that line hits the wall. Put ortho on. Okay. 
extend this till it hits it. Extend, and then a horizontal line to finish off the shape of the shadow. So this area is in shadow. Good. Only one item left to do, and that's the bench. And this is a little bit trickier. Okay, let's have a look at the section. Okay, so this is the bench. Let's get rid of these items. They're just kind of distracting. Okay, copy your 45 degree line into two places here and here. Okay, so the shadow from the top of the seat hits the wall and the floor. We can't see the floor shadow, it's in line with our view of the elevation, but we can see the height on the wall. So we'll project a line from that collision right the way across. Okay, and bear in mind this is on the wall behind. Okay, what happens at the end? Will we see any of the shadow at the end? We can test that. If we draw over the shape of the, the seat, okay, copy a 45 into these two positions, okay, and this shape would copy from end point to intersection. Okay, so you can see that the shadow is hidden, it's obscured by the, the leg of the seat, this, this kind of block that the seat's sitting on. So there's no need to worry about what's happening with the end of the seat there. We can trim away that line. Okay, now use the other seat blocks to trim away in between. So it's sunlight, shadow. Okay, we're not finished with the seat just yet. There's a second shadow we need to draw on, and that's just here. It's a thin strip on each of the legs, on each of the blocks. So we'll take a projection from there, drag it right the way through, hit the final block there, and then trim away Okay, so it's, this time it's the bits in between. So it's shadow, 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 shadow. Can you see another shadow we should put on? It's a very thin one. Underneath the roof, there would be a little strip of shadow as well. Okay. Copy your 45 up. Line right the way across. Five up again. Okay, you can see that it hits at this point, so there's no need to have any shape just here. So all we need to do is trim in between the roofs and trim the end off at this end. And that gives us our shadow projections. Let's stop the video just there, we'll say that's part one and we'll do the finishing off in the second video.